Alright, so after seeing a new Discord CEO who is the former Blizzard Activision bigwig, then now wants it to go public, I figured it was a good time to start looking at how to export a lot of messages and data from Discord, just in case. So I was going around YouTube and I was greeted with way too many videos that were either just too obtuse or sounded like they were recorded into a fan. I'm just trying to make a quick video for others to hopefully help you out. Please remember, I'm not trying to fear monger. It could be for the best. But if you're like me, you might not have saved everything in a few years and could always use a backup. So I'm going to show you how to export entire channels, including optionally pictures and videos, while using Windows 10 and Firefox. If you're not using both of those, it may involve some different steps. You're going to first need to get the Discord Chat Exporter application. This is an open source application that I'll have linked in the description. Once on the page, we're going to scroll down. And as we're scrolling down, pop open the documents, keep that up there, and go down to the staple releases. I'm just going to be doing the graphical user interface mode. So just grab your staple release. Now we're going to head over to the document link to show you some of the FAQs. When you're scrolling down, some of the key things you can see is that it does export your private chats if you want to. You don't have to. I'm just showing this to do different channel things. It does say that you can get banned, but it's just a superfluous warning. I mean, realistically, all you're doing is taking data that's already there for you. But just so you know, it could possibly happen. Now. Let's go over to the staple releases. This is 2442. We're going to scroll down and you're going to find the Windows X64 and download that. Now be very careful and just read it. Most of this is, most of your problems are going to come from just not reading. So we're not going for the CLI version. We're going for the Windows just X64. If you have a different operating system, grab whatever one it is. I'm not sure if the video will work for you. Now we're going to move out of this window, but keep your browser open because we're going to need it later. Go to where you downloaded your fancy dancy Discord chat exporter. Make sure you unzip it. Mine's already unzipped just to speed things up. Open it up, and we're going to go to Discord chat exporter.exe. Double click on that. What you're going to get is the next steps. We're just going to go through the steps step by step. It should be pretty much easy. Now, because you still have your browser open, you can either pump in your Discord or just click on the link and it will automatically open up the Discord. Now, with your Discord open, we are going to do a quick thing to find your token. That's the whole goal to all these different steps. Like it looks, it looks spooky, it's not. Don't worry, all we're doing is finding your token. What you're gonna do is hit Control, Shift, and I, and that'll change your browser to make it into developer mode. Now, while in developer mode, you're going to go down here and find network. Now, click on network and make sure it's highlighted. To get some network actual activity, we're going to click on different channels. See, now it's all pumped up and ready. We got some stuff. It filled it out. Good. Golden. Now, sort by file. And what we're going to look for is simply one called messages. Be nice if it went the right way. See, so now we have one called Messages. Mine's limit 50. I believe it'll always show up that way, but anyone that starts with Messages in the question mark, as per this, see, we're already on 7. Like, it looks like it's hard, but we're already there. Now click on it and highlight it, and we're going to look over to our side panel. Now on the side panel, you're going to stay in Headers. And it's very important that you read these carefully. So this is Response Headers. We're not going there. We're going to scroll down until we get to Request Headers. Now, when you're in Request Headers, you're going to copy the authorization. This is your token. So just copy the value, and we're good. Now, remember, not Response. We want Request. Go back, pop open your Fancy Dancy Discord Chat Exporter, and then throw the key up there. Now, once you have your key in, all you do is go to the next part. So for this video, we're going to go into my own server. And what I have is a small channel that is loaded with a couple messages, a couple images, and I believe an audio file. 
Now, once you select it or channel it you want, go down to the download button, and this is where you're going to pick your output path. Now, you don't have to, but I, I would highly recommend it myself. I just make it Discord backup. Super creative, I know. Now, save that. Now, for this, you can either do text if you just want the text or HTML, which will pop it up as a, a selectable file to open up in a browser. The HTML both looks great and wants is easy. I think it's really nice. I'm going to show you both by the end of the video, so don't worry. But we're in the boxes to get their description. You can set a date filter. Your output can then be limited based upon how many messages you want or the size, or you can filter based upon a different user or a, another qualifier, such as, you know, does it have an image? Does it have a video? All these will be found in the documentation, which will all be linked. Down here, we have either download your assets, which this is super important. This is what will actually download the images to your computer, images, movies, music. If you just want the text, uncheck it. So initially, I'm going to show you this without the assets, just so you show you the difference. So real quick, we're going to do just a text file of what's in my backup. So now we're going to export the text file just to show you what it looks like. You see the little, little yellow bar goes crazy fast because it's just a small channel, mind you. And I'll pop it open and show you what it looks like. This is what it downloaded. Obviously, it doesn't look great with videos or pictures, but it'll save all your messages, which is super nice for some of your more heavy text-based channels. But for this one, maybe it would be a little bit better to have HTML. So what we're going to do is change it to HTML, go back, make sure you're in the same path, and export it. Now, again, remember, I'm doing this without the assets checked. So this is what it looks like on HTML. It'll pop it open in your browser. And this is every single thing in that channel. Looking glorious. Even has clickable fancy audio. Now, for a proper huge backup, what we're going to do is HTML or text doesn't really matter. You can pick whatever it is. It's fine. I'm just going to recycle it. We do click download assets. Now, this is going to take a bit more time. For this channel, it's very small. But for a larger one, obviously, it's going to take much, much more time. Reusing assets is simply just avoiding redundant. It's just like overwriting, you know. You don't need to do that. It'll save you some time if you're constantly backing up. All right, so we're going to export that. And this is why it has its own folder. Because now it has every single one of those pictures. It has the music. It has everything all downloaded into this. So if you're going to do an asset backup like that, right here, like when you go to download the assets, I would recommend keeping its own separate folder just to avoid confusion. That's about it. You can repeat it for every single channel that you want, that you have access to, mind you. I used it to grab all my overlays from seven years ago, or for the last seven years. And look, I mean, it took maybe five minutes but this is going to save you so much time in the long run because otherwise I would have had to click and download everything individually, scrolling around. That's just, it's way too much work. So I think this saves a ton of effort. After you have your backups, I would also recommend tossing them somewhere else. You don't want to keep your backups just in one spot. Throw it on a flash drive, throw it into a cloud storage somewhere. But I mean, if you have all your backups and that gets corrupted, what's the whole point? It's a great application, and I'll try to help you with anything I can. Just leave a comment, and we'll work through it. That's it. Good luck.